Pashas Varim, Pashas Chazoin, Shabbos Chazoin. If I take you right now, like Kulchem, and you all came and we asked to get spies, we want to send spies to Eretz Israel. Rashi says, Bavuvia, Kulchem, everybody together, there's pandemonium, pushing, shoving. Oh, but by Mount Taira, there was Rashi Shivtechem, Ziknechem. I saw Kreva, I saw again, this, that when they approached Moshe Ben then it was very fitting, very proper. The children were Mechabed, the elders. They sat there before them, and the elders were Mechabed, the Russian, the leaders, to go before them. But here, everyone's pushing each other. So the Kleoka says, Rashi is telling us a very great Musr message, Moshe Ben was saying. What's Rashi bringing in? Over there was very decent. Everybody was fine. Says, yeah, because I thought, oh, he come with Derek Heretz. But now they come pushing, shoving, rushing. Ah, when you you want something, yeah, I need it, I need it. When I don't need something so much, oh, no problem, you go first. (laughs) It's respectful. So I thought over there was good. I see, no, no, no. (coughs) Excuse me. Something that's a passion that person has, he goes all out for it. That's really what we have to do. We have to recognize that too. Which really brings us to what that period of time we mentioned last week's parish in Matas Masse. It was also about the Ori Miklot. So we see the fellow that went to Golos. He got killed by He killed unintentionally. Careless fellow. We know that That means to say that a person merits to do something good means he had a schus, he had a merit, Hashem chose him to bring about the good. And Chalila, if something bad happens, then it means that he really was somebody guilty who had to bring about whatever took place. So obviously this fellow who killed somebody unintentionally was not a tzaddik. We know there's more chishboinus about that, but that's not for right now. Bottom line is, he's sitting in the Ari Miklat, is in the city of the refuge with the Levim and the Kaihanim. He said, I can't handle it. I, I gotta get out of here. I can't stand it. So he's scheming. What's he going to think of to get away? Thinking all different types of plots. i got to get away from this gullus. It's exile for me. I can't handle it. So, I eat the shakak. I mean, he thinks. He realizes, well, the Kohen Gadol, if he dies, I can get out. Well, I should poison him. I mean, it's not even practical. Kohen Gadol is living in Shalim. I might be in some other city of refuge. There's 48 of them. So, what's he thinking? He schemes and he thinks and he thinks, Got it! Brainstorm! I'm going to dive in! I'm going to pray to Hashem, kill the Kohen Gadol. Hashem, please do me a favor. I'm going to shake the little of an answer. Oh, no, Hashem, Mashiach, no, Hashem, please help me. Kill the Kohen Gadol, kill the Kohen Gadol. I've got to get out of here. That's what he's going to pray, pray for. And plead for Hashem to kill the Kohen Gadol. That's the only way he can get out. And interesting note, he doesn't curse the Kohen Gadol. Of course not. Pray, oh, Tvila. The word says in Makis, why is Tvila could be effective? And God should have daven for the tzibur, for the kahal, for the Kal Yisrael. Okay, he was at fault. Fine. But what do we do to, to uh, save the Kohen Gadol's life? His rabbits and his mother come along and they send food. Ah, culinary delights. Give it to this fellow. He can eat. Ah, scrumptious meals. Ah, you know what? It's, <laughs> it's better than going home. I'm staying here. I get good food. So he stays. This low life of a man. He stays. <clears throat> But they know the way to get him is through food. Now he has a good time over here, he's going to stay. So let's think about that. If we would be desperate, like that man who killed the shy gig, i got to get out of here. And he'd scheme and think, how can I get out of here? And he comes up with tefillah. Kogol should die. So imagine if we would be in Golos, in the exile, and we would be terrible situation over here. We'd be scheming, thinking, how can we get out of this Golos? How? And we come up with plans. We dive into HaKadosh Baruch get us out of here. We want to come back home to Yerushalayim, HaKadosh Baruch Mikdash. But the Satan, he wants to make sure we have a good time, that we should enjoy being here, so he won't scheme and think of all these different plans. So he gives us culinary delights and all the luxury items. Kishmak and Golos, what? what should I have him for? It's ganz kishmak. The difference being that the fellow killed unintentionally, he's going to keep the food. He's going to keep him there. But eventually, with osmosis, being in the environment of the Levi and the Kayan, he's going to see real life. 
But it means to serve a Kodesh Baruch Hu. But it means to be in this proximity, to be in the Oiv de Hashem. He's going to grow. He'll probably end up davening. Ken Gadol shall live long. <laughs> he wants to be in such an environment. But the Sutton doesn't work that way. He has us thinking, ah, this is over here. So we're going to be in the environment that they got him. It's just going to get worse. Little do we know, the truth is, like we, if we were daven at the end of all the tzim with passion, like we'd see what the words really mean, he doesn't let us even have that kavana. He was we're asking and pleading with Hashem that we should merit, which have is We don't, it just doesn't come necessarily by itself. That's scary in, in and of itself. But we can ask for it. We should live and inherit that time of Mashiach, which is toiv, we say. It's toiv, it's good. Whatever we imagine as being good, it's going to be better. This is what is going to be. Mashiach. Forget the Ruchliest part of it. That, of course, we want. But even the Gashmi is proper. We ever see as being good here, it's going to be better. So if we would allow ourselves to use the Sutton to what he makes us think that's good now, if we were to project that to the future for Mashiach and passionately cry to be, imagine being in the environment of Klav Yisrael in the good, in the physical sense, and in the Ruchni sense, what we would accomplish. We have the ability, if we think about it, to daven. And that's a story I saw in the publication, Chayenu, a woman, they bought a house. No, they bought a house, you have to paint it, you have to fix it up, it has to be livable. So she became very bucky, she became very well knowledgeable in all the different shades of paint and quality of paints and all the different types of paint, and she spoke to the painter, can't paint this, this, and the other, that. You have to do it, it's how you live there, you need to have a presentable place. And after everything is said and done, and she comes to admire the handiwork of the painter, she sees this big blotch. What, what's going on? Not paint it. She has to paint it. What, what, what's that? Oh, I don't know. The boss, he says, don't paint. I don't know. Well, Carlos comes in and says, Carlos, well, what happened to that over there? He says, oh, yeah. That, you, you Jews, when you have this temple thing that destroyed, you, you don't paint a square. Uh, you got to leave that unpainted. And she says, oh, he was humiliated. The guy told her about the Chum Besamikdash, that in our own houses, we're supposed to leave space for the Chum. And all of a sudden it hits her like a bombshell. This is, I'm, I'm so involved in my house. The Bansham's house, the Chum. The guy has to tell me we had a Chum. And then all of a sudden the whole life comes crumbling down. How much emphasis we put on our daily living to make sure our daily life is to the best that we can have it in this world. In the Bansham's house. <laughs> and if we would have a Kodesh Baruch Hu's house, if we'd have Mispal about Chaveroi, about the Baruch house, we would have our houses in Eretz Yisrael, Atzei Nek Doisha. We'd live amongst Yidin. We'd be living the Simcha with Avoid Hashem. We'd be living in the Beis HaMikdash. These are times that we have to be able to allow ourselves at least the moments to think, to focus, to recognize that if we would realize the desperation of Nebuch, we have to think of the Tzaris that have to wake us up. It's also about Rega. Person thinks about the gula, just even personal tsar, Hashem will save us. That's a gavaldic madrika. But imagine we think about Kosh Baruch who's covered, and we're his children. He loves us more, for he wants the best for us. And he knows that we'd be doing the best if we'd be back home. If we could allow ourselves those moments to think of that, which Kosh Baruch gave us, this Tishabov, which is Bechia Shalchinam, when we cried for nothing, if we allow ourselves to cry for something, to recognize the meaning that we should want and have the hakara of coming back to HaKadosh Baruch who loves us, he wants the best for us. He's doing everything in the world to wake us up, to bring us back. But we're closed, our eyes are closed. And we look around the events taking place, as Chazal saying, it's very advisable to get Rabbi Yisrael Moshe Sarasit's Kuntras about Kailash El and on Mashiach. The events taking place before our very eyes, we open our eyes. We aspire to this aspiration that our Zaydis and Bobbies had their entire lives of Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. That's why Yidin lived in Gullus. And we're living in the times where it seems to be happening, it's materializing. <clears throat> and if we would allow ourselves to yearn for that, firstly, just the fact that we want Kavit Shemai enhances our lives itself. We have so much more Hashivas to life, to who we are, what we are, to finish off the most Christ worth said of a boy, that he had 
even the war, someone gave him information. They had a bank account in Switzerland. And he's about to be killed. He gave it to a Christ with, please, if you ever meet one of my heirs, give him this information. He's tearing 25 years of this information in his head. Finally, in America, sitting next to Ayyid, looks at a poor man. And he says to him, what's your name? Shalom Aleichem. He says his name. He says, are you related to so-and-so? He said, this is my father. He says, wow, I'm looking for you 25 years. I got information for you. You have Yerusha sitting in Switzerland. And he gave him information. He said, I can't even afford to fly to Switzerland. I'll lend you the money. And he turns to his audience and says, this man, was he poor? Was he rich? And he says, rich? He said, oh, the poorest man around. Because he had money he didn't know he had. And he could have had it. He didn't have it. That's poor. He said, if we as Yidden would realize who we are, what we are, we'd be the wealthiest people on earth. But now, unfortunately, we don't have our chashivas, who we are. But they kill Choy. We're the poorest people. Because we have so much kayak, we have so much potential, we have so much chashivas, we have to access that. If we can do that, the Bosh should give us to recognize the Kamashavabanam, the Gulam, maybe should give us a Gulish Lehman Bukarov.